The gospel today is one of those memorable stories in, in the Bible. It's a challenging story, especially in times that we live in. We're bombarded with advertising on television, the internet, and social media. The next purchase will make us sexy, powerful, better than those around us. We may never say it or think it, but money and possessions are often a competitor for Christ, for our, for our affection. There are over 2,500 verses in the Bible related to money and possessions. So clearly, God understands how much money and possessions influence our lives. The reading starts with a man running up to Jesus. It must have been an amazing sight to see this rich, young aristocrat running up to Jesus, the penniless prophet from Nazareth, dressed in a simple tunic. He falls at Jesus' feet and kneeling says, good teacher. In Jesus' time, this actually signals aggression. Compliments of this type imply that the complimented person, in this case Jesus, has tried to rise above the others. At that time, when one person gets ahead, everyone else is considered to have fallen behind. The use of good teacher implies that the questioner envies Jesus. Jesus understands this and responds with appropriate humility. He denies the compliment. Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. Jesus then recites some of the commandments. Note that Jesus only recites the commandments that are essential to a decent moral life. The young man says he has adhered to these since his youth. And Jesus looked at him, loved him, and spoke. Now Luke and Matthew have a similar story, but Mark alone mentions that Jesus loved him. Love would have been an attachment and act in an active, practical way. The young man's claim that he has followed his commandments, has lived a moral life, stirs Jesus' affection towards the young man. Jesus would have liked the young man to join his disciples. Jesus knows the young man adhered to the commandments that lead to respectability. But he has not done anything to help others. To be a follower, you must do things for others, not just yourself. Jesus then provides him with a challenge. He wants him to go beyond being moral and respectable. Jesus goes, tells him, go sell what you have and give to the poor. Today, we assume this means selling all our possessions. At that time, the most precious possessions were family, home, and land. Jesus is telling the young man to break his blood ties and give, things to, give up things to follow Jesus. He's not saying everything. He's saying th some of his things. Jesus tells him his compensation will be treasures in heaven. Jesus also offers him a fellowship with the disciples. Now the young man would have understood what Jesus was encouraging him to do. He would have clearly understood the sacrifice demanded, but he was content with doing no wrong. He could have given some of his wealth away and be generous to others. With regret and sorrow, he rejects Jesus' offer. But Jesus still loves him. Jesus is not angry with him. He loves him too much for that. Jesus challenged the young man to go beyond being a moral and good and instead embark on the adventure of being a real Christian. Jesus is sad. The young man deliberately chooses not to be the person Jesus is calling him to be. Jesus poses the same challenge to us. The it was his unwillingness to share his possessions that caused the problem. So when we see rich in the Bible, it could be poss possibly changed to greedy. So this man was not only rich, but greedy. The disciples were shocked to hear that greedy rich have no advantage when dealing with God. Jewish society at the time viewed prosperity as a sign that you're a good person. If a person was rich, God must have honored and blessed that person. Wealth was a proof of excellence and favor with God. 
Jesus then says, this accounts for nothing. So the disciples are surprised at Jesus' statement. Then Jesus doubles down when he states, it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Now, some commentaries say that there may have been a translation error and that this really just meant a thick rope through the eye of a needle, which still is pretty impossible. Other commentaries suggest that at the time there was a type of gate, a very small gate, called a needle gate. So trying to get a camel through that would have been impossible. Still other commentaries say it's just as absurd as it sounds. All of them point to the same lesson. It's extremely difficult, if not impossible, for a rich person to enter his kingdom. Jesus was intentionally referring to something impossible, something challenging. Jesus knows that material possessions tend to fix our hearts on this world. If our main interest is material possessions, this tends to make us think of everything in terms of a price. Jesus embraces wealth as a test of character. Does prosperity make us arrogant, proud, self-satisfied and worldly? Or does it make us humble and self-giving? Does wealth as a test of responsibility God has given us a far prosperity. Are we great uh, stewards of this success? Do we treat material possessions as our own? Or do we consider them as gifts from God and use them as God would have used them? St. Francis of Assisi's feast day was this past Monday. He came from a very rich family, and yet he gave up everything. He was an example of letting go of this world to follow Christ. He challenged his friars to go and spread the gospel with simple tunic and sandals and trust in God that food would be provided. We live in a world that becomes more secular and less Christian each year. We live in a world and in a country that embraces materialism and consumerism. We live in a world where political leaders and wealthy do not always adhere to the basic commandments that are essential to a decent moral life. There's a series of recent articles that some of you may have seen in the papers, we could call the Pandora Papers, are examples of greedy rich around the world. Now the young man is really us. God deeply loves each of us. Will we be satisfied to just lead a decent moral life? Will we be, will we be greedy, will we be, are easy for me to say, will we be greedy rich because we use our, pe- our, self- our possessions selfishly? Or will we answer Christ's challenge to do more, to be a true disciple, be a good steward of the money and possession God has given you by being generous to others in need, being good stewards of our God-given skills and abilities to our sis- service to our sisters and brothers that you interact with each and every day, be good stewards of your given time on earth, finding the time for each day for prayer and inviting God into your thoughts, your conversations, your every decision. Will you choose to be the person Jesus is calling you to be?